Hey gang, Ronan here. And as you can see in this game, I am playing the Tier 5 German Tech Tree Destroyer T-22, which is uh, probably my favorite Tech Tree Tier 5 Destroyer. Way, way back, before the Japanese Destroyer line had the gunboats at Tier 8, 9, and 10, um, Minakaza was probably my favorite destroyer to play, followed by Matsuki, which was then at Tier 6. But when they changed the line, they nerfed, uh, really kind of nerfed both of those ships. They moved Matsuki to Tier 5, and they nerfed the torpedo damage on the Minakaza. Anyway, T-22 became my favorite destroyer. Now why? Well, if you look along the bottom of the screen there, you'll see a couple things that'll give you some idea. Uh, very quick reload, right? 3.6 second reload that you can see there which is uh, really nice. And the torpedoes, they, the reload on the torpedoes really isn't all that bad. It's got a speed boost, it's got smoke, which granted the German smokes don't last very long, but it can break line of sight and allow you to get away, which is really nice. And also hydro, which is just phenomenal at tier five. Because you... <laughs> you can avoid a lot of torpedoes that you would otherwise end up eating. Now, what is the thing that I, I, what are the things, I guess, that I like most about this destroyer? Well, first, let me tell you what I don't like. I don't like the HE shells. The HE shells do very little damage. Very little damage. The uh, HE damage per minute on this ship is 80,000, which is yeah, middle of the pack for the tier 5 destroyers. The AP, 146,667, and you're going to see here in just a second why that's the case. Maximum damage in an AP salvo, 8,800. HE, 4,800. So you can do a maximum of 1,200 damage with your HE shells in there. Fire chances and all that great. Now this Minikaza, I, I thought he might push around here, but you know, the bots cheat. So he's going to move just close enough to proxy spot me. And then he's just going to sit. And I'm smoking because I want to be able to push far enough away where he can't proxy spot me. But in the meantime, I've got the AP loaded. Now just keep an eye on what I'm able to do to this Emerald. I'm going to pop the Hydro because I don't want to eat his torpedoes. Quick reload. Hard hitting AP shells. And down goes Emerald's head. That's eight. <laughs> eight Citadels into the light cruiser there. And I'm getting some help against the Minikaza. Königsberg out there. Get the torpedoes away, and then I'm going to make use of this smoke again to go dark. And I'll go ahead and turn back in. The t torpedo reload on this ship is pretty fast. Now, what can I tell you? Okay, so I, I already went over the... Let's just look at just the AP shells. And... Damage. There we go. AP shells. The hardest hitting tier 5 in the tech tree line, at least, is Boisky at 2500, followed by Jaguar at 2300. This ship can do 2200 with the AP, but you've got on German AP, you've got increased penetration values. So the AP on this ship is really nice. Initial velocity on these shells, 708 meters per second, which really isn't too bad. You can contrast it with something like uh, uh, Jaguar, <clears throat> which is at 725, Nicholas, 792. Uh, and then, of course, Podwojski, which is 861. So are they super accurate at longer ranges? No. But they're decent, and they're not hard to make good use of, as you saw just a minute ago. Uh, what else can I tell you? The, the fuse time on this is a third on the AP. A third of what it is in the Podwojski. You know, we talked about the better penetration values, and it? It has that, and it doesn't. You, you can arm them against things that you might not get with some of the larger AP shells. HE shells, like I mentioned, it's like shooting. It's like shooting a pop gun or a dart gun. It just uh, it doesn't do much. It can be a very frustrating experience. It's the absolute lowest of the pack. 1,200 maximum HE damage per shell. Contrast that with uh, 1,900 per shell on the Pavoyski or the Jaguar. Uh, and most other destroyers are going to be between 1,600 and that. So uh, 
really, really low and, and really not a great fire chance with only 5% fire chance. So I don't recommend using the HE on this ship very much. The AP is really kind of your bread and butter. That and the torpedoes in combination with smoke and hydro will definitely be your friend. Now, at this point, I've got two red ships sunk and, um, you know, I'm able to do a little bit more work for the team here. What can I tell you about the torpedoes? Well, the torpedoes, uh, in terms of torpedo damage per minute, uh, Nicholas, by far and away the best, but you've only got five and a half kilometers range on those, so you have to be spotted in order to use them. And you're going to get banged up in most cases in order to do that. Minikaza, well, it's got good damage per minute in terms of, you know, if you landed every torpedo, if you landed all six, at 92,857, with seven kilometers of range, you can stealth torp, but they only do 10,833 damage apiece, maximum. Um, Nicholas isn't much better at 11,733, I guess, but uh, the reload is 66 se seconds on Nicholas, 42 seconds on Minakaza. Then you get to Jianwei, which is Pan-Asian, and of course that can only hit larger ships. Mitsuki, and then the T-22. Now, Mitsuki and, and T-22, 80,862, 80,852. Mitsuki's range is 8 kilometers, T-22's range is 7.5, but as you can see, you can definitely torpedo things from stealth here because I it, the way that I've got the ship configured right now, 5.7 kilometer detection radius, 7.5 kilometers range on the torpedoes. And if you, you know, if you're looking at torpedoes that do 13,700 HP of damage maximum uh, and you land a couple of them, you're, you're going to do some damage. I mean, there's just there's no no other way to slice that and even if you don't land every torpedo the fairly quick reload on these things with it, it's 61 seconds really pretty pretty good I mean a lot that's what's the lowest Minikaza right 42 seconds and I'll just run down the list here Nicholas 66 seconds Minikaza of course 42 then Junwei 73 Matsuki 65 T22 61 seconds, but Boiski 70, Acasta 95, Jaguar 75, Bisbee is only 55 seconds, Maestral uh, is uh, 80, and the Moabinet is 75. So it's among the lowest at 61 seconds. If you expect and have a commander with a significant amount of points, maybe you're using, uh, you know, the uh, commander skill that decreases that even farther as you take damage. Of course, at this point, I haven't taken any damage. So that wouldn't have come into play anyway, but it's it's something that I very often take on destroyers uh, if I get enough commander points. Now, I used up some commander XP to you know put a commander in this thing that had, what did I end up with, 13 points, 14 points? I forget, to be honest with you. But uh, I had a spare 10-point commander laying around, and I think... I think I might have done the, what I, it was kind of the standard fare for me and then added uh, Adrenaline Rush, which is what I was talking about a minute ago. Regardless, I'm kind of I'm kind of watching this, uh, this play out. You may have seen in the chat, I asked Snowstorm there in the Congo to help a little. He was sitting in our cap circle behind an island, not really able to shoot much. And then he pushed kind of all the way up right into the middle of all four of the red ships and just gets himself chewed to pieces. Now, I'm guessing probably a relatively new player, and I appreciate the fact, Snowstorm X, that you you came to help, but, <laughs> but it didn't really work out very well. Uh, you got a little bit too close. Really, all I wanted was for you to be able to put your guns on something. And we've got our Monte Cucoli out there, and a New York out there, and myself versus four red ships. And this actually turns into, a, a, I think, a pretty decent game. You can see my comment there in the chat. And he was a very good sport about it all. And he was, I think, trying to finish off Iron Duke. And granted, he was low, but he was angled reasonably well. He was using the island for cover. And I'm hoping I can put a torpedo or two on the Iron Duke, maybe help flood him out. 
And I'm going to use the island here, and I'm going to I'm going to move away. I'm going to go south because I don't want to get detected. Getting detected in a destroyer, so even even that low tiers against ships that don't have very good accuracy, can be a quick trip back to port. The torpedoes are a very lethal weapon, as long as you're in the game. So I want to stay in the game as long as I can and try to be dealing damage and being an effective part of the team. Um, the torpedoes should be getting there any second. There they are. I only landed one, did get a flood, and I'm not really in a position to be able to try and hit him with HE. Now I mentioned a 5% fire chance with your HE, and that's mitigated by the tier of the ship that you're hitting, so it actually could be lower. So I don't use the HE very much. I count on my teammates, and if one of them were in a situation where I could see, okay, he's got cover, I might have you know, mentioned to them that, uh, you know, that, that battleship had used its damage control. And Montecucli, he's trying to get out of range here, but he does even a little bit of damage trying to get away. Fortunately for him, both of those red battleships were kind of sitting behind islands. Now, our New York, he pushes up. I have to hand it to him, even if he's a new player. He, he, he didn't give up. He just kept going. Unfortunately, you can see the gap between the two islands kind of that I'm looking at right now that he's going to pass through and he's going to put himself in a situation where, he, situation where he's taking broad sh broadside shots from both those battleships, as well as HE spam from, uh, you can see that uh, rattlehead, which is basically, I think, an Omaha. Well, yeah. New York finishes off Katowski. The HE spam from the rattlehead is significant, and he's taking the big shots from the battleships as I get some torpedoes out. I thought about trying to move north here, but if if I did get detected, that would be a really bad place, so I played it safe. Turned into this gap, and I'll run north on the other side of this island to try to stay ahead of the battleship's push. Now, on this map, on a lot of maps, but on this map you can see, if I stayed in the middle as that Pyotr Veliki pushed in, I would be probably detected at some point. Just wonder if I can start a fire. Then if I catch him with another torpedo that floods, it'll, it'll flood a while. Somebody else got it burning. That's good. Um, it's better to, to just go ahead and get out from the middle of those islands. Get myself out of cover to a place where I can spot him again. I'm using the mini-map and the little circle around my ship, the kind of shaded area where you can see the 5.7 kilometers. I don't want to be detected. I know he's moving forward. He's probably going to be around 6, 6.1, somewhere in that ballpark. If I had guessed when I light him up. There he is, 6 kilometers, just outside of my detection range. I think he's probably going to want to keep his nose to the New York. The New York's about to come behind the, come around from behind the island. I'm counting on those things to keep him moving in more or less the same direction, which is why I put all of my torpedoes kind of in the same place. Now, we'll see, but that's what I was thinking. And it actually did work out. I think I'm able to put two into his side here. And he did flood. But it looks like he's repaired that and is now healing. So I got to count on my teammates. Monokukli does not disappoint. So that's nine torpedoes that I've been able to land and 30 shells that included eight citadels to help finish off a cruiser in the very early going of the game. And now I just have to keep the torpedoes working. I think Rattlehead is probably the target that should be focused next. And I, I, re <laughs> I remember now, Monokukli gets really close to the Rattlehead. And the Rattlehead is dangerous up close. It does have torpedoes, as well as a lot of guns. And Monokukli is 9,039 HP. And Rattlehead, 17,997. So basically 9,000 versus 18,000. So I was a little anxious when Montecuccoli decided, yeah, you know what, I think I'm just going to push ahead and I'm going to do a 1v1 really close range fight with the Rattlehead. It all works out. This game actually has a very happy ending, but I was a little anxious about that. And I also know that that player right there, uh, pretty good player. 
Rattlehead finishes off our New York. They were all, uh, just fire after fire after fire on New York, but he hung in there as long as he could. Iron Duke, I think, wisely turns around. And he's going to be able to get shots on the Montecuccoli as soon as Montecuccoli becomes visible. Now, Rattlehead is visible, which means Montecuccoli is visible. 9,000 HP. I'm saying don't close on him, man. Um, but he handles it. <laughs> it's hard to argue with results. I was hoping he was going to kite. Uh, you can see I was very worried right there. Down to 2,900 and some odd HP. But he brings it home. The torpedoes missed. I decide, you know what? I have to try and get a shot out. Rattlehead unfortunately turned back to the left, and I'm making myself visible here, visible here to the Iron Duke. Montecuccoli is able to finish him off. I'm going to stop, hit the speed boost, and then change locations as quickly as I can after breaking line of sight so that the Iron Duke doesn't blind fire me. And I figure out where is Iron Duke going. I don't want to get detected. You'll notice he's got an aircraft in the air. I have my AA turned off. That's the P key. Bottom of the screen, left of the uh, icons. You see a little red, uh, a little yellow aircraft in a reticule, the word off, and then A. And then underneath that, the letter P. The P key will toggle your AA and secondaries on and off. And if you're in a destroyer that is counting on stealth, turn off your AA. The only time you really should have it on is if your AA bubble is smaller than your uh, detection radius. Or anytime you get detected by aircraft, go ahead and turn it on. A little advice to our Montecuccoli, but he, he didn't need my help. He knows uh, with the little bit of HP he has, he does not need to be seen by Squeaky2024. Squeaky did a good job there of avoiding my torpedoes, but I think he's going to be headed for Montecuccoli, and that's what I'm counting on. You can see Montecuccoli, he's getting off shot. Maybe over the corner of the island, since I'm spotting for him, and it looks to me like Iron Duke is going to try and run between that gap, so I'm going to put some torpedoes out there, and I'm going to spread them out because I don't know exactly what he's going to do, whether he's going to come south, whether he's going to stay you know, right through the middle of that gap, or whether he's going to stop short. Make sure I don't get detected. Still got... There we go. And I really only need to land one. And then I can start fires, so the Montecuccoli can start fires. And I'll just move out of the way here. I don't want to get detected, as I mentioned earlier, especially when I'm surrounded by rocks. It's going to limit the number of places that I can go. Now he's moving a little bit away. I can move a little bit closer. Still got half a kilometer at this point to play with. Now he's turning to avoid. I do tap him with one. Pick up the high caliber. Get some flooding which he's repaired, and now I just have to try and get a fire. He doesn't have any guns pointed my way. Just use the torpedo reticule to make sure of the direction that he's heading. And I'll keep trying to land shells. There's the fire. It's going to burn for a while, and I know that. Because he just used his damage control. Yeah, he's probably going to die before they get there. But go ahead and toss him out, and that should do it right there. Okay, so uh, T-22, like I said, probably my favorite of the Tech Tree Tier 5 destroyers. You want to make use of your decent detection radius, the AP shells if you get a chance, uh, particularly against light cruisers, and there are a lot of those at Tier 5. You can see I had pretty decent damage, 51 shells on target, 10 torpedo hits, a couple of incapacitations, finished off three red ships, set of fire, five floods, eight citadels in the early going, spotted a couple ships. Taking a look at the team score, top of the scoreboard at 1784, nothing to write home about, but you know, I, I feel pretty good about it. Picked up a high caliber, uh, tip of the hat to uh, our Königsberg and Cavour, and also to the Rattlehead and Iron Duke on the other team. Rattlehead in particular played a great game. And our Montecuccoli, who uh, he managed to pick up four kills 
And so credit him for keeping an eye on what's going on on the minimap and hitting the targets that could be finished off. Some details about what I hit and with what. 35 HE shells, but very little damage. They do next to nothing. Did manage to start one fire, kind of miraculously. 16 AP shells to finish off a light cruiser. Some flooding. Uh, not very much potential damage. Uh, in these tiers, if you're in a torpedo destroyer, you, my best advice to you would be try to play the whole game without ever being spotted. Decent XP, decent credits. Um, thanks very much for joining me. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, I hope you'll like and subscribe, maybe tell a friend, and I'll see you next time.